Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about the income approach to measuring GDP, so gross domestic product. This is actually video number four in my series on GDP. In practice, there are three ways of measuring GDP. We have the expenditure approach, which I went through in video number three, the income approach, which is this video, and the value added approach, which I'll do in video number five. I'll link to the playlist in the description below if you want to see any of these videos or any others in the series. In terms of the income method of measuring GDP though, the method really just involves adding up the total income in a country over the period of time that we're interested in. And the theoretical idea behind the approach is that for every $1 value of output that an economy produces, this will be associated with $1 worth of income, which pays for the factors to production used to make that output. And so there is a one-to-one -one correspondence then between the value of production and the amount of income in an economy. We can find the total value of our output, so GDP then, by adding up the total income. And it follows from this that when we find GDP by adding up our income, it really comes down to understanding how are we modeling our factors to production in the economy and what are the associated incomes uh, with those factors. Now textbooks can differ a little bit on the detail here. A very simple but common and useful approach is just to say we have two factors to production, labor and capital, and our income will either go to labor in terms of wages and all of the residual income we just term profit, which belongs to the owners of capital. Now here, some textbooks will distinguish between physical capital, so machines and equipment that we use in order to make our product, and what they call intangible capitals. So for instance, patents or copyrights. In this account then, we have two types of factors to production, labor and capital, and two associated incomes, wages and profit. So adding up our total income and finding GDP, if we modeled our economy like this, would amount to adding up wages and profits. I will mention briefly that this way of looking at how we divide up our total income actually leads us to some important measures we call the labor share of total income and the capital share of total income. So here we find the labor share of total income. We measure it as total wages, salaries, benefits, all of the money income that goes to our workers as a proportion of our total income or of GDP. The capital share of income will be the residual share of income that doesn't go to labor. That's the income that basically goes to all of our other factors of production apart from labor, again, as a share of GDP. And these are measures that are talked about quite a bit in the literature. So I'll put on the screen some examples here. I'll link to these papers in the description just in case you want to follow them up. The idea is that these statistics can really indicate what's happening with the distribution of income within an economy uh, between two groups, our workers and the owners of capital. A falling share of income going to labor in particular is often identified with a concern about rising inequality and can also indicate that wages are not increasing as fast as labor productivity. So these are indicators that really economists keep their eye on. You might see discussions about these in your travels. Back to our discussion about the income approach though, more complicated accounts will break our total income and our factors of production up into finer categories. So for instance, on the top right hand corner here, I have an account with four factors of production, labor, capital investments, land and entrepreneurship. Here wages will be the income associated with labor. Interest will be the income associated with capital investments. Rents are earned on land and property and the residual will turn profits and you might see this as dividends. This goes to entrepreneurship. So if your course uh, presents the factors of production in an economy in this way, finding GDP would involve then adding up total wages, interest, rents and profits. As I've said throughout all these videos that I've done on GDP, GDP tracks the level of production within a country over a period of time. At the heart of our income approach is that for every $1 worth of production, there'll be a corresponding $1 worth of income that goes to the factors of production. Some things might look like income will not count as income in this approach, however, because they don't correspond to any productive activity. For instance, if you resold some secondhand goods, say a car or some clothing, the money that you get from that sale will not count as income that you should include in these calculations. 
because the money you get from reselling those items does not correspond to any new productive activity that needs to go towards GDP. So relatedly, capital gains will not be counted as income either. So capital gains or capital losses are increases or decreases in the value of assets. So for instance, if you own a house and that value of that house increases, this doesn't count towards GDP and neither would the depreciation of an asset, say uh, machinery for instance, this wouldn't change the value of GDP. Right, so that's our income approach. Just a quick video today, really in comparison to some of the others. I hope that it helps though. If it did, please like and subscribe. I hope everyone's having a good one.